Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Give our pastor a hand clap of praise. He's an awesome man of God. Thank him so much for just giving me another opportunity, giving me the first opportunity. Hallelujah. Now give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. If you will go with me to Romans 8 and 28, Romans 8 and 28. And as you are standing and turning, I will pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for these, your saints, God. This your Wednesday night crew, Lord, these that want another dip. We ask that the word get in their spirit, in their hearts, Lord God, let it deliver, sanctify, set free, Lord, as you will have it do. Lord, we thank you for our pastor. Continue to lift him up, health and strength. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are, are the called according to his purpose. The title of tonight's lesson is Never Take Your Ashes for Granted. That's how you got your beauty. Never take your ashes for granted. That's how you got your beauty. You know, my pastor taught me a long time ago as a, a teacher of God's gospel that it is our job to break the word down, to dissect it to its least common denominator. So we're going to get right into this word today, you all. Romans 8 and 28, the B part, the A part says, and we know all things work together for the good to them that love God. Let's stop right there. The key point is the first one, them that love God. See, the ungodly does not get this grace simply because they do not love God. No way you can love God and don't know him. If you don't believe in God, disobedient to his work, wicked, evil, sinful, then all things are not going to work together for your good. So we just can't say this because we come to church and we're doing the wrong thing. Well, everything going to work together for my good. And the key to the scripture said those that love God. So if you love God, then he's going to work it out. But those that are walking in the spirit of ungodliness can't get the same grace as those that's doing what they supposed to do. Laboring for God, living for God, acting right for God, being what God has called us to be. The second key point is this, to them who are called according to his purpose. See, everyone is called to love God. We know that because the Bible tells us that every man is given a measure of faith. We are born with a measure of love for God. What grows the measure is our giving our lives over to him. See, understand that everyone has the opportunity for all things to work together for their good. But only the ones that love God are called according to his purpose actually get his grace card. Don't take it for granted that your bad turned out to work for your good. See, everybody didn't get the chance to fix it like you did. Everybody didn't get a chance to work it out like you did. Some folks sitting in jail right now because they didn't have your chance. Folks got HIV right now because they didn't get your chance. Folks dead today because they didn't get your chance. Folks alcoholics on drugs right now, they lost their mind right now because why? They didn't get your chance. See, you better praise them today because everybody don't get a chance like you got a chance. See, we know favor ain't fair, but it's yours. You own it. So walk with it because it's all over you. The favor of God is all over you. You just got to own that thing. He's giving you your favor. You own it. It's yours. Ephesians 1 and 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to his, the purpose of him, who work of all things after the counsel of his own will. I once told the Sunday crew growing up that, I was never the prettiest girl at the dance, but God blessed me with an awesome earthly father who stayed with his, my mother until death had done them part. And he told me all my life that I was what we call in New York the ticket. So the ashes of being passed over sometimes, overlooked sometimes, not picked sometimes, didn't always bother me because why? It was instilled in me that I was the ticket. See, the problem what we have in so many people, women of God, men of God, because they didn't grow up understanding that no matter what goes on around you, baby, you the ticket. See, you got to understand that it may not look right. My hair might not have been as long as I liked it when I was
was younger, my teeth might have been what it was and what it is right now. My legs might have been kind of scrawny, but that ain't true. I always had some legs, but some things wasn't always right. But my daddy told me a long time ago, baby, you the ticket. You got to understand if you live in the spirit of understanding who God is, that God is your father now. God is your heavenly father now. And he's here to tell you, baby, you the ticket. If you get it in your mind that no matter what somebody would have done to you, somebody has said to you, how your heart may have been broken, that hey, it don't matter what man has done, my father up in heaven said, I am the ticket. First Peter 2 and 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I'm here to tell you tonight that your heavenly father has chosen you, so therefore you are the ticket. Don't let the ashes of your past, the turmoil of your past, the nonsense of your past keep you from believing that you are the ticket. See, Mark Twain once said it's not the size of the dog in a fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. I learned early that I might not be the biggest one, but I got one of the biggest punches. See, I don't know about you, but God has equipped us now. He's placed us in a different position now. He's allowed us to go higher now. And so now we got to walk in the abilities that God has given us. They can judge your exterior, but God judges your heart. You have to have some ashes in your life so you can gain some fire on the inside. Don't take those ashes for granted. That's how you got your beauty. The beauty of your fight came from your ashes. The beauty of your patience came from your ashes. The beauty of your tenacity came through your ashes. The beauty of your no-quit mentality came from your ashes. Lesser people quit on what you've gone through. Less of people have walked away on what you've gone to. Philippians 4 and 13 have already been placed in your heart, and you know that I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Moses was a fugitive, a stutterer, born a Hebrew, raised an Egyptian, trapped in a ball of confusion, but God came along and said, hey, excuse me, sir, I'm sorry, uh, excuse me, but uh, tag, you're it. That means it was up to him to be able to lead the people and to be the leader that God had called them to be. See, you've gone through all sorts of confusion in your life. You've gone through all sorts of situations where you were not the best speaker or you didn't have the best pedigree of your family. But God said, guess what, tag, you're it. You got to use your ashes in order to lead what God has told you to lead. You got to use what God had didn't give you at first to know that he's giving you even much more in the latter. We learned about the daughters of Zelophead. You remember our pastor taught us about them. They were told that they were inher their inheritance must go to a man, put down because of something they had no control over. How many of you been in situations that they put you down because of something you had nothing to do with? It, no, it ain't your fault you a woman. It ain't your fault your age. It's not your fault you light skin, dark skin. It's not your fault that you tall or short. It's not too far, your fault that you weigh this much or don't weigh that much. You've been put down for something that wasn't your fault in the first place. Assume that you were not worthy. Assume that you were messed some stuff up. As a woman, you ain't good enough. You don't know what you can do until you have been pushed to your ashes. That's when you learn to speak up for yourself. See, they had got pushed to the ashes. They looked around and see my daddy worked as hard as he did and he left me all this. I'm just going to give it over to somebody. God has done all that he's done for you and you just going to sit on his blessing. You just going to sit on his resurrection. You going to just sit on how he gave you a second chance. You just going to sit on that thing. No, no, no. We're going to call the devil who he is and that is a bold faced liar. You gonna go with your ashes and you gonna show how pretty you really are. David was nothing but a sheep herder, a baby of the bunch. The last picked by man, but the, the only picked by God. The trouble said that the Bible says that David had a beautiful countenance in spite of. See, he was the baby, but he was cute in spite of going through everything that he went through. See, you might have got some ashes, but you're cute in spite of all the things that you went through. 
So you all you got to do is walk in what God has blessed you with. And it really ain't what you did because it's between your mama and your daddy. But at least walk with it and own that thing and say, I am who I am because God has blessed me to be so. We've all of us had a situation where we, we had gone through some stuff, dealt with some stuff, and in spite of, God still saw us through that stuff. Romans 8 and 28, and when we know that all things work together for the God to them that love God, for the good to them that love God, and to them who are called according to his purpose. See, the Bible says that the princes of this world knew if they knew what they were doing, they would have never crucified Jesus. So many people try to leave your remains as ashes. They thought if they cremated your character, burned your attributes, set a fire your anointing, they thought they would ultimately destroy any trace of you. But what they did not know is the most important part is the fact that blood, blood does not burn. See, I did some research on this stuff. I was like, man, let me read a little bit about this ashes stuff. See, actually, back in the day, when they were trying to put out fires before the fire extinguisher, they would use cow's blood to put out fire. It helped to extinguish the fire. This is why you can go through the same firestorm somebody else does, and you come out unscathed. Why? Because you're covered by the blood. Because when everybody else was burning, you were covered by the blood of the lamb. When everybody else was going through, and they were trying to go through that same situation, and they were coming down crazy, and they was coming down burnt, and they was coming down couldn't get up. Jesus said, I covered you, my sister. You are covered by the blood of the lamb. That's why you were able to walk through some stuff uh, and shake your tail feather because God has covered you by the blood of the lamb. Blood don't burn. And because you cover by the blood, you take it care of. See what the devil meant for God for bad, God meant it for your good. Don't take those ashes for granted. That's how you got your beauty. See, you had to go through that in order to know how powerful you really are. It's important to understand the significance of ashes in biblical culture. See, in biblical culture, in biblical times, it was customary for people to sit in ashes and cover themselves with ashes to express mourning and loss. So they would sit in what they call sackcloth and ashes. Ashes were therefore associated with pain, loss, and suffering. In current times, we have a tendency to wallow in our ashes. We find the pain more comfortable than a deliverance. So we see the ashes. We know we don't went through it, but we like being in it because that's all we know is the ashes. Let's face it. Pain is easy. It's 10 times easier to be in pain than to fight through it. It's easier to look ugly than to look beautiful. You know how you come out the house, you ain't combed your hair, you just put on something, you just looking ugly. It was 10 times easier to do that than to stop in the mirror, put some eyeliner on, put a little bit of something on your face, put it on your lips. It takes something to get beautiful. See, it's easy just to lay back, I'm in pain, I'm going to stay in pain. I really don't want to get up because I don't want to do the fight that it takes. But the Bible tells us this in Isaiah 61 and 3. To appoint unto them the morn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. It's easy to be ashes. That's why people wallow in them. You know it's not the spirit of God because God expects us to work. And we know that all things work together. It just doesn't give you something and you got to work in order to get out the ashes into your beauty. So we sit back and say that God going to bless me. Yes, he will. But God wants you to work your way out of it. Work your way out of the ashes. Work your way out of depression. Work of your way out 
of the doldrums. Work your way out of a bad spirit. Work your way. See, God likes workers. God likes people moving. God likes people that people got a mission. God don't want you sitting there, although it's time for rest for everyone, but you got to get up and do something. God don't say, I don't sit up here and wait on me with your hand down. Do something so I can bless you. Do something so I can bless you real good. Do something so I can see that you're trying to go even higher. The Bible tells us if a man does not work, he does not eat. It could be the fruits of your labor. It's easy to be depressed. All you have to do is allow the spirit of the enemy to take over your mind. And then the next thing you know, you are depressed. It takes some heart to live the Philippians 4 and 8 life. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. When you live in that life, when no matter what go on, I'm thinking pure, lovely, praises, there ain't nothing that no enemy can do to you. Ain't no ashes can hold you down. Ain't no wallowing, no ashes. Ain't no sitting up there, you're laid up in no ashes. Because why? Your mind is on a Philippian 4 and 8 life. You cannot spend the rest of your life trying to retake classes that you should have passed a long time ago. Baby, you don't fail that course. I told my daughter, you got to help. That's all right. It's another class that is part of that same genre. You going to pick something else. Forget that else. We can't fix that else. Go ahead and get this one. At least get a seat so we can get up out of here. You can't keep retaking that same class and keep getting an F over and over again. You can't pass biology. You failed in Illinois. You failed in that Southwest. And now you're failing it in Memphis. Stop taking biology. We got to stop taking classes that we keep failing. Stop dealing with folks that keep failing us. Stop dealing with people that ain't doing us right. I'm not going to keep taking that same class and failing over and over again. It's something else that I can take to qualify for biology. We be stuck. I failed. I got to take it again. No, you don't. Embrace your asses and move on from them. Your beauty awaits you. Embrace them because it's through them that creates the beauty that we see in you today. But you, be, but just because you embrace them and we understand that they're our past, don't count them short. Because what I love about my ashes is that they tell about my history. And my history sometimes gives me a, a peek at what my destiny is going to be like. See, I had to go through some things in the past to see what my future was going to get bring me. See, I embraced the ashes of being an assistant principal for 11 years. Long time people passing me over. I was considered one of the top APs in the city of Memphis, but I still couldn't get a job. Nobody wanted me. Nobody thought nothing of me. I don't know her. She this and that. So that's okay. I just keep on doing my job. I just keep on working. But I never was satisfied with being an AP when I knew I had a principal spirit. Paul uses that in whatever state that we are in to be content. But content ain't satisfied. See, satisfied means you got what you want. Content means, hey, it's for now. See, I might be going through something, but it's just for now. I got to ask you for a ride, but guess what? It's for now. See, I'm content with you bringing me on Sunday. I'm content with getting dropped off on Monday. I'm content. I thank you for it. But understand, it's for now. See, we got to go through some stuff. We got to live through some things. But tell your neighbor, for now. You're going to get out of that stuff. Your ass is going to get you through it. Understand that I may be content, but I ain't satisfied. I know what God put in me. I'm going to keep on getting it until I get satisfied. We all have sat at the dinner table and ate dinner and still wasn't satisfied. You content, you ate, you full, but you ain't really satisfied. But we didn't all ate that meal when you push back from that table and you don't want nothing else. Ain't nothing else I want. I've been allowed or been offered three different schools since Westside. I turned them all down. I've been offered twice to go ahead and apply to be a, the, the, uh, 
the director of leadership for over principles. I told him two times I'm not. You know why? Because West Side is what I wanted, and I'm satisfied. I'm going to sit there in that chair until I die. God called me to praise you so I can go ahead and tell them that dying world that Jesus lives. You got to do something until God lets you know, hey, this is where you belong. You're satisfied. See, the woman with the issue of blood understood that her illness was just her ashes. And she had to deal with that for now. But she wasn't satisfied and kept pressing on for Jesus. Paul was content with the fact that he had an affliction. But he never stopped wanting it to be removed. He accepted it, but knew that it could not hinder his push to tell the history and the teaching of Christ. Jacob understood that he had to labor for Rachel. For now. His life with Leah was his ashes, but he didn't let it stop him from working for the beauty that he wanted. Don't let your ashes stop you from working for the beauty that you wanted. Don't take it for granted. You got to go through them ashes. That's all right. But understand that your beauty is at the end of every workload. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them, that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. See, I love where we are in this ministry right now and that our pastor introduced us to the midwife and how the expectation of the midwife has raised us to the next level. It put something in me. I told you when he brought up that 2020 word, I was reborn again. There was a few times in the midst of him preaching and another time I remember when he was preaching on a Wednesday night and he talked about that he wasn't worried about a storm, that he was the storm. That rebirthed me, rebirthed something in me. I was like, the storm? I want to be the storm today. So when the 2020 came and he started talking about the midwife, I said, man, I can do that. That's something I can do. Some stuff I can't do, but I can do that. That's in me. I, I can do that. I can do that. I know it's in me. Then a couple of days after we were into it, he sent me a text and reminded me something that I said back in the day. And I said, man, that stuff was already in me in the first place. And I've been sitting on it thinking it was ashes. It wasn't no ashes. It was bringing up the beauty that God had in me. What I love about the spirit of the midwife is that she helps others to show quantifiable, result, quantifiable results of their labor. See, that epidural helped you, but you still had to go through the pain. So we understood that you had to get that little shot in your back. But sorry about that, baby. You're going to be all right. You're going to feel, you're going to be all right. But you still got to go through that pain. The midwife is there to coach you through your ashes. The healthy baby is the quantifiable result of your labor. You have to believe that the things that you are suffering has catapulted you somewhere, made you better, stronger, faster, and more beautiful. Yeah, you have scars. Just put some cocoa butter on that thing and keep it moving. Everybody in here, I can point to every woman in here, and I bet you if you think about it, you got that one knee scar. Everybody got that scar on that leg. When that boy done pushed you over, when somebody done kicked you, when you fell, I fell off of a curb running. I was back running from somebody, fell off the little curb on the street, boop, scar on my knee. To this day, I am 53 years old. That scar still there on my knee. But I put some cocoa butter on that thing and I kept it moving. You got to put some cocoa butter on some of your scars and keep it moving. Cocoa butter is what? oil and we got a whole bunch of anointing oil waiting for you come up and get prayed for let them put that oil on your head and keep it moving let your ashes be what it used to be let the ashes be back in the day you got to remember them but you ain't got a relish in them just put some cocoa butter on it and keep it moving you got to understand who god is another thing i love about the spirit of the midwife is she represents or she respects time and movement See, she understands we don't sit in our ashes, but we move through our ashes. If you are, te if you are telling your story about your heartache over and over and over again to a midwife, and that midwife keep listening to you, get rid of that midwife. Because she's an enabler, not a change agent. 
If I keep telling Tamla every day, I got hurt when I was 12. I got hurt beat when I was 16. I got this one happening to me in 20. And Tamla keep listening to me and don't say, baby, get up and start worrying about something else. I need to get rid of Tamla. Tamla ain't helping me. She enabled me to be a fool. She enabled me to keep listening to my past. She enabled me to keep wallowing in my pain. Get rid of that midwife. I told MIT, I know everybody in the past. I know this is a tough time. We got to get up out of this thing. We got ministry to do. We I like to live and she had to dealt with a horrible situation but that woman of God got up from that and she kept it moving you got to stop worrying about what happened to you 20 years ago as soon as somebody else go through it you run into them girl I got beat too when I was 20 both of us got to talk about this 20 year old prank no I'm gonna say come on you got hurt you got out of it there's three things that we can get out of every ash of somebody beating us one you live two you still look good three you ain't go back to him so he can't beat you no more see when this one thing about this ministry we got three things for everything three ways to get you out three things to get you you going. Three things to keep you moving. Three things to get you better. You better come up with three things to make it a little bit better for you. Three things to make life even more easy for you. Three things to let you know that you can do it. Don't allow your ashes to sit on your head so bad that you keep running with it and you starting to share with somebody else. I love you. I'm telling you now, I love you. I love each and every one of you in here. And each and every one of you have a story. And I don't mind listening to your story one time. I don't like watching movies more than once. So I ain't going to listen to your story more than once. You went through it. Let's get through it. If you still hold on to it, turn it loose. Because we got some work ministry to do. We got some folks that need to be saved. We got some life that need to be lived. You got to move on from that thing. Everybody is enduring some holiday. Everybody has endured some pain. We got to understand that whatever happened to us in our lives, even if it's generational, it may be a curse, but the curse can be broken. Anything that we've gone through can be get, we can be rectified if we believe in God. My family has a history of schizophrenia. My great grand, my grandfather killed my grandmother, chopped her with an axe. That's my daddy's parents. One thing about schizophrenia, it skips a generation. So it didn't hit my daddy, but it's going to hit my daddy's kids. So the thing about that, that's good, that it hits the firstborn son, which ain't me. I'm the last one. So it hit my brother. Unfortunate for him, he about as crazy as a bed bug. He does have it, but I understand how the generational curse came. But it does hit the firstborn. So it did skip me, but I have a child who was my first and only born. When Elise was a little girl, she would always hear voices. We didn't know what it was. She would be in the middle of conversation and she would stop and she would hear these voices talking. One day, she came up to testify. She may have been seven, eight years old, I don't know, but she was a young girl. She got up to testify before the people and in the middle of the testimony, she heard the voices and she stopped talking. The entire century just stopped because that was the first time everyone actually saw her zone out. She left from the saint from this position, gave the mic and sat in the back where Ayana and, and Unique was sitting right there. Unique was, was where Pastor Kinda was. She hugged our pastor and said, Pastor Kinda, what's wrong with me? Pastor Kinda said, Don't worry about it. We're gonna pray for you. After that situation, you all that girl had not spaced out since then. You got to know. That whatever you had generationally, whatever curse that might have been in your family, you get connected with the people of God, with the man of God, with the word of God, and he can fix some things. There's no reason other than prayer that that baby got released from that thing. She should be as crazy as anybody else, and technically she a little bit still is, but God had fixed that thing that she don't space out no more. At least can give you a conversation for four hours and not take a breath. I told M MIT, the only person I know that got the spirit of the runs faster than way is that child of mine. She will talk about anything and anybody because she went to the man of God and that man of God never doubted, never doubted. He didn't say we're going to go to the doctor. 
He didn't say, baby, I don't know what's wrong with you. She didn't say, well, let me think about it. What you going through? He saw her. He watched her. And he said, don't worry about it. We're going to pray on it. He held that girl in her arms and prayed for her. And to my life, I swear, that girl had not had another problem since then. You got to know who you connected to in ministry. You got to know that your beauty is in the midst of all your mess, all your bad situations. Don't matter what happened with your mama. Don't matter what happened with your daddy. It can be all fixed if you love God. In closing, the last scripture, 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Just think he was, she was sat back there with a fool. Wanted to talk about what was going on with her. Well, what you feel? How your head? For what fellowship have righteousness and unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? See, the term change agent, which is what a midwife should be, has been in use for at least since 1947. A social psychology circles in reference to those whose task is to facilitate change in an organization. Our job as midwives is to facilitate change. Your midwife promotes change from pregnancy to motherhood. She doesn't take for granted your ashes, but she's not going to let you sit in them either. This, that, is an, that was not a midwife that's going to let you sit there. That's a vulture. She's feeding off of your carcass. You don't allow anybody to feed off your ashes by you repeating it over and over and over again. Don't let anybody feed off of it. You got to know that every ash that you went through is to show the beauty that's on the inside of you. Show God your beauty. Don't take your ashes for granted, but know it only brings you your beauty. Hallelujah.